Hello guys, welcome back to another update video on my multiplayer game. If you're new here, this is my multiplayer game I'm working on. A first person, action shooter game with multiple game modes that can be played in a variety of team sizes. Alright, now that you're up to speed, let's jump right into it. Make your character hold the assault rifle and sniper rifle two hands. Fourth, love of make the player model I your own style also hands because floating gun. Can you make hands to hold the gun? You should add hands on the gun in first person. Why you don't pick up the gun and two hands? Reload the gun. Wait, the player can't see their own hands. Correctly. And if Why we can see you don't both make the hands him hold the, the gun with two hands? Hand. Make the second hand actually hold the guns correctly and reload them correctly. Okay, okay, jokes aside, you guys really wanted the hands to hold the items. And I hear you. So that's why I implemented a system called Hand Inverse Kinematics. Let me start off by quickly explaining what Inverse Kinematics, or IK, really is. In animation, IK is a method that uses mathematics to calculate the position and rotations of bones in a chain in order for the end of the bone chain to follow a point. In our case, the player character's arm is the chain of bones, and the hand is the point that we want to move to follow the item that it's holding. You can see here that the right hand is already doing this, but now I have also adjusted my character rig to support left hand IK as well. Now, the left hand can also be seen holding items and interacting with item animations. This definitely makes the first person and third person view of the player character look much better. Let me know what you think below that like button. And if you want to learn more about IK, I'm leaving some links down below too. Moving on, the next thing I did was add the new R870 shotgun item. I started by modeling the shotgun in Blender during one of my streams. Then I applied a flat color palette and brought it into Unity. I programmed a new shotgun class which inherits the gun class. The main difference with the shotgun is the shooting logic. Unlike other guns, a shotgun fires an array of bullets or pellets. To get this effect, multiple rays are cast in a random variation around the shooting point. I also adjusted the damage logic so that guns can do different amounts of damage depending on the range your target is. For example, the shotgun shouldn't do much damage at far ranges, but the sniper rifle should. In the end, all this logic put together makes the R870 shotgun very lethal in close quarter combat. One more thing I wanted to mention is that the reloading logic is different with the shotgun too. Unlike other guns that reload an entire mag, the shotgun instead loads one shell at a time. All this new logic did take a bit of time to get working, but now implementing any additional shotgun items in the future should be much quicker. The next thing I did was implement wall banging. Wall banging in video games is the ability to shoot a target through a certain thickness of walls or other objects. This is a fairly simple feature, but when you want to actually implement the logic to get it working, it does get a little tricky. The way I implemented it in my game is I cast a ray when shooting that follows the bullet path. This gives me a list of points that the ray hits along its path. Using these points, I can get the objects that we hit through walls, and if it's a player, we can apply damage. But one thing to remember is we don't want to do full damage to players when shooting them through walls. In order to do this, I cast back rays starting at the second point, all the way to the end of the original ray, which give me points on the back of the objects that we shot through. I can then calculate the thickness of the objects we are shooting through, and I can use these thicknesses to calculate the damage drop off. Or if a wall is too thick, we can do no damage at all. So yeah, now there's wall banging. If you see an enemy run behind a thin wall, you can maybe get a lucky wall bang. Or if a bunch of enemies line up just right, you can even get a collateral. Another thing I did was add map variants. Since it's the winter season in my part of the world, I decided to make a winter variant of the valley map. In this variant of the map, it's snowing, and everything is covered in snow. I'm calling this a variant of the valley map because the same scene in Unity is used, which means the map itself is the same. What I did was implement a system that can swap out materials and enable or disable objects in the scene depending on the variant the map is set to. It's as simple as running the command slash map variant, and then passing the variant number. In this case, the winter variant is 1. In the future, I think there will be a way to vote for the map variant from the lobby. Currently, the only variant I made is the Winter Valley map, but in the future, it'll be easy to add variants to any maps. This could include day and night variants of the maps too. Alright, the last thing I'm going to showcase is a bunch of small adds and tweaks. Starting off, when you die, I made the camera follow the player who killed you. 
This just makes the death screen feel a little more polished and it also lets you see where you got killed from. I added third person aim down sight animations. Now the gun item in players hands will be raised when another player is aiming down sights to make it easier to tell when they are aiming. And lastly I added gun kickback. Now when you shoot guns they will kick back in your hand which makes shooting feel more polished and less static. That's it for this update. Join the Discord server using the link below, click on the playlist in the end card to watch all my other update videos. I hope you like this update video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, thanks for watching, Zippy out.